Hello. My name is Bill Bennett. I am one of the instructors in the CIS department here at MSJC. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to convert the Lunches database that's in the Oracle format into a format that you can use as a script to actually create the Lunches database in a Microsoft SQL server. So to get started, we want to go ahead and get the file that has the uh, Oracle script in it. And so I've logged into the uh, CSIS124A course here in Blackboard and then clicked on the weekly schedule link. And then in the list of weekly schedule items at the very bottom there is our week one folder. And when I click on that, you'll see several folders inside of the week one folder. And at the very bottom, we have the user account information folder. Let's click on that. And inside of this now we have the Oracle script files here about the middle of the page. So you can see that uh, here's the lunches DB TXT file. So that's the one that's used to create and populate the Oracle server with all of the tables in the lunches database. So what I'm going to do is just download that file. Go ahead and save it to my desktop. And then the next thing that we want to do is to open up the SQL Server Management Studio. That's a free tool that you can download from the Microsoft SQL Server website. So once the SQL Server Management Studio loads, we'll go ahead and connect to our database server. And then we want to open up that script file that we just downloaded from the Blackboard CSIS124A website. And that was on our desktop, and that's lunchesdb.txt. Okay, so here is the script file that's used, like I say, for the Oracle database server. So what we want to do is we want to convert this now to a format that will be acceptable to a Microsoft SQL server. I've already actually written the solution file here, so let me open that one, and we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison here for you. Okay, so here's the copy of the file that I made earlier, and you can see that I put an extension of .sql on there. So that way it's recognized by the SQL Server Management Studio. And then once we get that one open, we'll go ahead and put it side by side with our Oracle script. And make a little comparison here. So you can see in the Oracle script that they set the echo off, they clear the screen. Something that's really not important for us at this point in time. Um, one of the things that we want to do as we go through here is drop any existing tables that will allow us to uh, continually overwrite this database if we wanted to run this script more than once. Um, you'll notice that in the Microsoft SQL Server environment they also they use the Go keyword, uh, which technically is, is not really a, a Microsoft keyword. It actually comes from the C SQL specification. But the idea is that that's uh, a way of indicating to the SQL Server to go ahead and run the previous command. So basically anything that hasn't been run from or since the previous go command was issued, um, those commands will all be run when it encounters that go command. And then you'll notice too that when we do inserts that uh, in a Microsoft SQL Server it's always a good idea to, before you have your first insert command, that you add a begin transaction and then you end it with a commit transaction. So that basically allows for the Microsoft SQL Server to do a rollback if any errors occur uh, during the record creation process. In the Oracle environment, you'll see that they just basically use a commit at the end of their listing of their insert statements. The other major difference that you'll find uh, between SQL Server and Oracle Server uh, is that there are some different data types. And so let's look at this first table here, the uh, L employees table. So you'll see that in the Oracle environment, they have a data type that is called number. And they, that data type does not exist in the SQL Server environment, so we need to do a conversion on that to numeric. And so what I find is best to do is, in a tool like SQL Server Management Studio, um, you could just select the uh, data type there that, that you don't that you want to replace and do then a search and replace command and then uh, do a control H to open up the find and replace dialog box and what we'll do then is we'll just say go ahead and go through this script file here and anytime that you encounter the number 
data type, change it to the numeric data type, and uh, that's pretty much all you have to do for that particular one. Okay, so 34 occurrences found and replaced in there. And then we'll move this over here because then the other data type that you need to be aware of that you're going to need to convert, at least within the script files that we're working with here, uh, would be that Oracle uses the newer Varchar 2 data type and the Microsoft SQL Server only has a Varchar data type, doesn't support the Varchar 2. So again, you basically just want to do a selection in the Oracle file and uh, select it, do a control H, open up the find and replace dialog box. This time we're just going to replace that with a var char and then replace all of those 13 occurrences. So from a data type perspective that cleans up the Oracle file. Uh, the differences that I pointed out earlier you would have to make uh, more of a in a manual nature there which is to go in and add your your goes um, after each table is created or altered, dropped, created, or altered. Uh, make sure you add the begin transaction, commit transactions around your inserts. And that's pretty much it for the conversion. Now one of the things that you'll notice in this script is it doesn't actually create the database. It just creates the tables in the database. So I'll just come over here into my object explorer and quickly create a new database. We'll call that the SQL demo. Click OK, and then all I have to do is inside of my script now, I've got my insertion point in the script that I want to be active that I'm about to run, and then we'll look for our SQL demo database there. So that's where these tables will all be created. So we'll go ahead now and execute this script. And the only time that we get errors, you'll see, is that when it attempts to drop the tables, because those tables don't exist in that database, obviously, yet. Everything else runs very smoothly. Let's just open up now our databases folder. Let's open up the SQL demo folder. And inside of the tables folder, now you can see there are all of the tables that uh, were generated from our lunches DB script there that we modified. And you can verify too that of course the records have been inserted correctly by either editing or selecting them. So you can see the records do I indeed exist in each one of those tables. Okay, so I hope that's helpful to you. If you decide to uh, use SQL Server in this class, uh, I highly recommend it for those of you that are in the Internet Authoring Program and will be dealing with SQL Server in part of your classes.